Hello mates, your own YouTuber the Alert is here and today we will kick off the week with a guide. This week we will discuss everything there is to know about the Nicholas, the tier 5 American destroyer. To do this I will take you through the following steps. 1. Everything you need to know in port. 2. The strengths and weaknesses of the Nicholas. 3. Your opponents and how to deal with them. 4. Theory of gameplay of the Nicholas and chapter 5 some examples of gameplay. Chapter 1 Everything you need to know in port. Let us start with the order of unlocking the modules on Nicholas. First, unlock hole B. This does cost you a gun, but you do gain some hit points, some extra AA, and most importantly, an insane rudder shift time. After this, unlocking the guns should be your priority. It gives you an increase of 2.8 rounds per minute. The loss in AP damage is not important, as you do not use AP that much anyway. After that, go for the torpedoes. Although this upgrade seems way bigger than it actually is. We will discuss this later on in the guide. Progressing towards ammunition and consumables. As a general rule, you will only be shooting HE. Furthermore, I do not see the need to use any of the premium consumables. If you really insist on spending money, go for the premium repair kit, as in this destroyer, you will be shot at. As for the upgrades, these are the ones I would recommend. In the first slot, install main battery modification 1. In the third slot, steering gear modification 1. The upgrade in the second slot is in my opinion too expensive for the tier. But if you want to keep the Nicholas and want to spend the money on it, spend it either on AA guns modification 2, which is my preference, or on gunfire control system modification 1 for some increase on your gun's accuracy. Going towards the camos, go for type 1 camouflage. This gives you a better concealment range. As for signal flags, only Sierra Mike is truly beneficial to this destroyer. As for cruise skills, now comes the more difficult part. I will give two different advices, depending if you will keep your crew on this ship or you will take your crew with you all the way onto the gearing. If you take your crew all the way up to the gearing, go for these crew skills. If you keep your captain on the Nicholas, these crew skills are becoming quite important. Which one you choose will be up to your preferred playing style. The reason for the split is that from the Benson and onwards, your torpedo range is greater than your consumant range. Before the Benson, so also for the Nicholas, this is not the case. On open water, you will be spotted if you fire your torpedoes at the enemy. Chapter 2. Strengths and Weaknesses First of all, the key strong points of the Nicholas. In my opinion, the strongest point of the Nicholas are the guns. On its tier, it has the highest theoretical DPM with HE. Now, this is something you will never reach, but with the potential of fire, you sure can dish out a lot of damage. Another strong point is the consumant of this little destroyer. It is not as good as the tier 5 IGN destroyer, but with 6.7 kilometers of consumant range on the surface, and an excellent 3.1 km from the air, you can, with a little bit of map awareness, drive all over the map without being spotted by cruisers, battleships and airplanes. The third strong point would be the insane amount of torpedo tubes on your ship. Although the range of 5.5 km does not exceed your consumant range, there are other ways to unlock the potential of these. Furthermore, the response time the enemy has is only 8.9 seconds, which definitely can surprise some of your opponents. 
as you can see, the upgrade towards the better torpedoes is not that great, as the response time the enemy has is practically the same. Switching to the weaknesses of the Nicholas. In my opinion, the greatest weakness of the Nicholas is its consumant range. To fire your guns and torpedoes at the enemy, and thus be effective during a game, it does mean that you will almost always be spotted when you have a direct line of sight to your enemy. This does limit your playing style a lot. Another key weakness of the Nicholas is its hit points. With only 13,100 hit points, this ship will die very quickly when it is targeted by the enemy. The last weakness of the Nicholas will most likely be a surprise to you guys. These are the guns. The shell travel time of the guns is really long. This means that enemies at range can easily dodge your shells. It will take some time for most of the players to get used to this, but if you have played for example the Cleveland, you know what I'm talking about. Overall, I do think the strong points of the Nicholas outweighs the weak points. The true strong point of the Nicholas is that it is a well-rounded destroyer. So all the key strong points amplify each other, while the weaknesses can be dealt with pretty easily by adapting your gameplay. This means that, in my opinion, the Nicholas is a beast of a destroyer. Chapter 3. Your opponents. Let us start with your Japanese counterpart. If spotted, you should win a 1 vs 1 easily and even a 1 vs 2. The DPM of your guns is almost double that of the IGN destroyer you can encounter. But be careful, the IGN destroyer has an excellent consumant range. Be very careful for your own counterparts, the US destroyers. The Clemson actually has a higher DPM than you and the Farragut has the same. This does mean that in a 1 vs 1 you will either lose the fight or you will win with only some HP to spare. Cruisers are the easiest opponents to describe. Just stay away from them. They are the counter in the game against you, so try to avoid them as much as possible. The one exception for this is the Furataka. Battleships are also a good target for you. A continuous spam of your guns with HE can definitely make their game a hell and set them up for multiple barbecues on their ship. When in a 1 vs 1, you can even consider a YOLO towards them to torp them. As for the carriers, they can be a threat to you with them spotting you and them using their dive bombers. But if you spot them, your HE spam will be deadly. So just enlarge that minimap so you will not be surprised by some plans. Chapter 4. Theory of Gameplay As this little destroyer is so well rounded, one can have a multi-purpose role. Earlier in this guide, I told you guys that the strong points will amplify each other and the weak points can be dealt with gameplay. So let's focus on the latter. First of all, your biggest counter are cruisers, so do not engage them. Secondly, when firing your guns, the target you are engaging, except for the IGN destroyers, should be engaged with someone else. You do have damage per minute. You don't have the hit points to trade. Your teammates do. Furthermore, your torpedo range is only 5.5 km, and thus shorter than your consumant range. This does mean that you, to be effective with your torpedoes, have to fire them behind obstacles on the map. The best example for obstacles 
or islands and smoke screens. The following tip will be defining for you to excel at the Nicholas. Make sure that one of the following always applies when using torpedoes. One, the target will most likely spot you, but he will die when you fired your torpedoes. Thus, he cannot retaliate. Or two, after firing torpedoes, you can run away behind concealment or run outside of your detection range of 6.7 kilometers. This is quite difficult, but is doable. If you follow these two tips, you can do an insane amount of damage with your torpedoes without dying after having shot them. If you're unlucky enough to be playing on the ocean map, this will definitely be a challenge. To give you some examples, here is a selection of lineups. In this first example, you can see that the enemy has two Japanese destroyers. If we can spot them, they should be our priority target. We can also see that the enemy has four cruisers. All of these are our biggest counter, so we should avoid them. The battleships we can spam with HE, and maybe we can surprise them with a buttload of torpedoes. We also need to be aware of our minimap, as the enemy has two carriers. A similar lineup, but this time with more cruisers and only one destroyer. In this case, with this many of our counters in the game, we should play very conservatively in the beginning of the game, and hopefully we can take out the Minikaze early in the game. Later in the game, when the enemy has less cruisers and more targets will be singled out, we can do our damage. In this third example, only three cruisers that can really punish us. We really should watch out for those Clevelands and Omahas. The rest we can deal with. Our focus should again be the IGN destroyer and later in the game some battleships. That was the theory behind the Nicholas. Here is some gameplay. Chapter 5 Gameplay Examples Here are some different situations in which I show what I've discussed in the last 10 minutes. In the first example, I make use of the peekaboo style torpedoes. I see my enemy is in a natural funnel. I do time this situation poorly, but in this case, the island is not my obstacle to hide behind. So I use a smoke screen to create another obstacle. As you can see, it's effective. The second example I'm going to show you is the one versus one against a IGN destroyer. We are on the ocean map, so this guy could have gotten an insane game. However, he makes a mistake and lets himself get spotted. As you can see, the one versus one feels like a stomp. Another situation in the same game arises. A one versus one against a battleship. As you can see, we keep on spamming HE shells towards the target. He is engaged with someone else, so we can keep on going at him. Here you see that even after a couple of games with the Nicholas, I have trouble leading the shells because of the long shell travel time. I do set him on fire, and here comes the nice part. As he was engaged with someone else, I can get really close. The first torpedo spread is an area of denial spread, while the second spread is focused on killing the target. I hope you like this guide of the Nicholas. If you did, feel free to share, like and subscribe as that helps me a lot. If you have any questions regarding the game, feel free to ask them in the YouTube comment section or hop by on my stream.
suggestions for the next week's guides are also more than welcome. See you on the battlefield.